Unreal Engine 4.20 has a large amount of changes and a few smaller ones. And we're going to cover some of the smaller ones to the UMG or the Unreal Motion Graphics or the UI system we use inside of our projects. One of the bigger changes for this is we now have a better organized system for our screen sizes. So we see them categorized and it also will easily allow us to set them up when we want to test. So let's try something like 720p. You'll see on the bottom left, we now have a layout. It tells us we're scaling our content 1.0. We have no safe zone set, and we see our resolution information, as well as a quick shortcut and a display for our DPI scale. We can also now easily see our safe zone displayed here at 0 0.9 inside of our editor with the little red preview that we can see there. Let me go ahead and shut that back off. In addition to being able to see that now, if we're using something like a scaling inside of our mobile devices, it will show it. And we have support for non-uniform scaling, like on our iPhone X, which has a notch. So we can see here, this is outside of our safe zone, and these are inside, and it shows the red preview here. At the top, we can also flip the current safe zones, so you can see how it would look in different orientations and different landscape modes. And in addition to that, we can switch it between landscape and portrait. Click here. We can now see what our project would look like in portrait mode and landscape mode and how our layout would adapt accordingly. In addition to this, we have some new widgets. We have a rich text block. You can refer to the documentation for more information on that. But it allows us to do things such as set colors and fonts and different types inside of our text. We have three list views. We have a list view, a tile view, and a tree view. They're all basically the same. They will display an item inside of it in either a list view, a tile view where we have little tiles that can be set in terms of our settings, such as our widths and our heights and alignments. And then we have our tree view, which is a list view, except we can have children. So we can have nested children, and it looks more like a tree or like a file browser. Now, there are some special things for this. We have some different settings over here. Over here, we have the entry widget class. You need a list entry widget to be displayed inside of our list views. Now, this will be the class that we're going to use. You can select out of an appropriate entry. In order to be an appropriate entry, it needs to inherit from a certain type of widget. So if I go over here to my list entry 2, this is my sample widget. We go to our class settings. We have our inheritances, our implemented interfaces, not inheritances. And we have two different options down here, a user object list entry and a user list entry. We want to choose the user object list entry, not the one that doesn't have the object. And if we go ahead and save that and compile it, now it'll show up as a new valid entry in our list. These are primarily meant to be used programmatically. So we would create items. We would create entries, like, for example, my widget, and add them. So that way it adds them into our list. What you see here inside of our designer is just a preview. You can see here, this is the number of items we are previewing, and you can see how it would look when you set it up. After our new widgets, we have some extra changes. So some of these changes are the way items are copy and pasted, and some of them are the way our scroll panel works. Let me go ahead and delete these extra images for now, and we're going to look at our scroll box. Let's move him over. Eh, we'll keep him over here. I have 10 entries inside of our scroll box. So if we didn't have it set to scrolling, we would see all 10 entries. I'm gonna set this to just five because we're gonna show a ratio here. Previous to 4.20, we could never really tell where it would be on the screen. So let me set this up to show it, entries, and we'll hit play. And we'll see it prints out zero at the top. When we scroll our list, the number is gonna change and it's gonna to get to roughly 0 0.50 or 50%. The number returned from this node, and we'll go ahead and look at the node here, the get view offset fraction is the fraction or the percent between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100 percent of how much our scroll box is scrolled and how much is not being displayed. So if we scroll 10 percent down, then we're going to see 10 percent as our 0 0.10 as our value. And it's useful if you want to know how much your player has scrolled. Copy and pasting has seen actually a big change. Let me change this to, let's go with something like that so we can see our full view. And we're going to go ahead and pull up 4.19. So here's 4.19. We've we dragged an image into our system. And let's say we want to make a couple copies of this. If we paste them in our canvas panel, they're all going to stack on top of each other. You can see that here. That's slightly annoying. In addition, let's say we made a awesome layout. We went ahead and we pasted, let's paste one here. We paste one here. 
and we took some time and we set this up and we have a nice uniform setup here and we're happy with the way this layout works and we want to duplicate it this is going to be used maybe on the other side of the screen we could copy it and paste it and unfortunately when we paste it well it all stacks on top of each other 4.20 changes both of these behaviors let's take an image and we'll put it in here we're going to copy our image into our canvas panel like we did before, but we're going to copy it multiple times. And you'll notice it starts cascading down. Instead of being on top of each other, it cascades them down for layout purposes. In addition to this, if we were to actually set up a layout, so we want our nice little layout like this. We spent hours making this perfect, but now we want two of these. When we copy and paste now, it's going to do its best attempt to maintain the layout, the orientation, the distance between each object, wherever we're pasting it. So that's it. Those are a few of the smaller changes to Unreal Motion Graphics or the UMG system in Unreal 4.20.